the appointed time is upon us. Jesus is coming. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we're not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes to rapture his church. But just look around you right now. The stage is getting set for a coming one world government, a new world order, a one world religion, and a one world currency. It couldn't be any more clear right now that the stage is getting set up for the rise of the Antichrist and the false prophet in the new world order right after the rapture of the church. And we see the stage getting set up very clearly right now for the mark of the beast system, which is not implemented currently, but it will be implemented during the coming tribulation period. But folks, it couldn't be any more evident where we are right now. Jesus Christ is at the door. That trumpet is fixing to sound. And if we see things that are going to find their ultimate fulfillment during the tribulation period, casting their shadow on the earth right now, folks, that day is upon us. The appointed time for the rapture of the church it is upon us. And I wanted to encourage you today, for those of you that are fa uh, feeling down, that are feeling weary, folks, we all can sense it. We can all feel that that day is upon us. I want to reiterate that we're commanded to be watchful in the Bible. And we're told we will see the day approaching. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to 9, I want you to go through this again with me. The Apostle Paul recording, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right? They shall not escape, referring to those that aren't saved when the rapture happens. They're not going to escape. But those of us that are saved when this event occurs, when the appointed time does come, we will escape the wrath to come. Look at what it says next in verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You see that? For most of, a majority of this world, when that day comes, it will catch them off guard because they're not paying attention. They're not being watchful. They're so caught up in the world. But for those of us that are awake, that are watching, that day is not going to overtake us as a thief. And we all can sense it right now how close we are. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. We're not appointed to it. The tribulation period. But very clearly, we're told to be watchful. We're told to be sober. We're told to be vigilant. And we're told we will see that day approaching. And it's not going to catch us off guard like a thief, like it will for most of the world. But we can all sense it, folks, how close it is. For loving his appearing, the Apostle Paul also tells us in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Are you watching? Are you loving his appearing? The Apostle Paul tells you right here, if you're loving his appearing, when that day comes... When you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema, the Bema seat, you're going to get the crown of righteousness. Imagine that, laying that at the feet of your king for loving his appearing. Folks, 
It's time. It's time to rise up. It's time. God is giving us opportunities each and every day to plant seeds. Whether it's coworkers, family members, or friends, we can't let opportunities pass us by right now because tomorrow is not promised. That brings me to what I want to share next in Ezekiel chapter 33. Turn there with me. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head." He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among, among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So though, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul." That's for the prophet Ezekiel in the, um, Ezekiel chapter 33. But folks, I think it's just as relevant today. Because we have a whole world that's lost. We have a whole world that sees something's going on right now. And we need to give them the truth, what the Bible says. We need to tell people, folks, that Jesus is coming. He's coming any moment. And we need to tell people that Jesus Christ is the only name that can save them. And he is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. Because that trumpet's about to sound, guys. Again, we're given opportunities each and every day. Whether it's in person or on the phone or on some other way of communication, we need to use these opportunities. Again, we can't save anybody, guys. All we can do is plant the seeds, and God will provide the increase in His timing. We can't save anybody, but folks, we got to plant seeds more than ever right now. Again, tell people that Jesus is coming. People see something's happening on this planet, and they're asking what in the world's going on and what's coming next. Well, the reality is a full-speed train is coming called the Tribulation. But just before that train hits, Jesus is going to rapture his church off this planet, those that are truly his. And we don't want people to, to be here for what's coming. Yes, it's crazy right now, but we ain't seen nothing yet compared to what's coming during the Tribulation period. So we need to warn people right now those we love, we care about, those that we're around, that we're talking to every day, tell them, again, that Jesus is coming, that Jesus is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that's going to save them. It's time to rise up. Watchmen and watchwomen all over the world, it's time to rise up. Rise up with me. Final moments, final push right now. I don't know when that day is, but just look around you folks. It is upon us, the appointed time. For the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, it is upon us. You're not promised tomorrow. None of us are. Don't doubt yourself right now. A lot of people that I talk to, they, they, they look at their past and they're saying, God can't use me. Look at all the people God used in the Bible. King David, who was a man after God's own heart, look at the mistakes he made. He had his best friend murdered and slept with his best friend's wife. But he was a man after God's own heart. At mostly everybody God used in his word, they had their failures, they had their setbacks, they all made mistakes. All of us have. But we need to move forward. We can't look back. You have been born for such a time as this. And that brings me to what I want to finish with. What Mordecai said to Esther in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth 
whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. You have been born for such a time as this. You matter. You make a difference. God has called you to sound the alarm and to give people the gospel of their salvation, not preach religion at people, but preach to them the gospel of their salvation. Like the Apostle Paul records in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, and Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. But like it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, you know, in whom you trusted after you heard the gospel of your salvation. We want to give people the simplicity that is in Christ. Tell them that they're sinners in need of a Savior, that God loves them so much that he would be born of a virgin, he became flesh, he dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified on that cross at Calvary, shed his precious blood for all of us on that cross at Calvary, but he became sin for us on that cross at Calvary, paying that sin debt that we could never pay on our own so we could be forgiven of our sin and be with him forever. And all he asks us is to receive that gift, that free gift that Jesus died for you, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day. And when you put your full faith and trust in that, you're sealed into the day of redemption. You're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And that's what we want to share with people right now, folks. Because every soul matters right now. And the fullness of the Gentiles is about to come. That trumpet's fixing to sound. So let's, more than ever right now, let's use these opportunities we have in these final moments to plant the seeds like never before because the appointed time is upon us and Jesus is coming and he's coming any moment. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming and he's coming quickly. God bless you all.